Ross and Carrie, the show where we don't just report on fringe science, spirituality, and claims of the paranormal, but take part ourselves. Yep, when they make the claims, we show up so you don't have to. I'm Carrie Poppy. And I'm Ross Watcher, and we have a special guest. Very special guest. So we've been telling you about Flat Earth. We've not gone to a conference, but we've watched it from afar and told you about it. And now we have with us Mark Sargent. I, well, I, we won't call you the father of uh, Jaya, don't do that. <laughs> of modern <laughs> flat Earth, but you are certainly a uh, large proponent of flat Earth, and seems like you kind of kickstarted the movement within the last year and a half. The uncle of flat Earth. <laughs> That's not bad either, I suppose, unless it's one of those creepy uncles. <laughs> that, that we wouldn't like that. Non creepy uncle of flat Earth. Well, yeah. thank you for being on our show, Mark. I am happy to be here, and thank you very much for having me. Of course. So maybe you can first off give our listeners who may not be familiar with you an idea of what it is you uh, do to promote Flat Earth. Sure. I started out in the beginning of 2015, February 10th to be exact. I made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues. And I put them out on the internet with the intention of trying to get some answers because I couldn't find them myself. I couldn't figure out of the globe. I couldn't prove the globe anymore in a court of law. And so I put them out there to the hive mind because I figured the internet hive mind misses nothing. Mm -hmm. thought for sure it'd be shut down. I thought for sure some academic somewhere would come back at me and say, hey, you really messed up here. You can shut down your channel now. And instead, the Flat Earth Clues became the dummy's guide for Flat Earth, which kick-started off a huge new Flat Earth wave and here we are two years later, and the, we just finished up our Flat Earth International Conference. There's another one coming up in uh, London in April. And uh, I've had a whole, I mean, what did I, I'm up to 160 interviews or something like that. Oh, wow. So where, yeah, like, like just not even, I mean, just this morning at midnight uh, last night, I did Good Morning Britain. Oh, wow. With, yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. Against an astronaut, of all people. It's kind of a last minute thing and it was fun. So yeah, it's been a wild ride so far, but that's what I do. Oh, I'm sorry. My YouTube channel is just my name, Mark K. Sargent. All my stuff is under Flat Earth Clues. There's an Amazon book that's out there and an audio book. And I do a radio show on Strange World. I'm sorry, on True, True Frequency Radio called Strange World. I'm sorry, I'm running on low sleep. And uh, other than that, I make a whole bunch of videos. Uh, there's like 900 Flat Earth related videos on my channel. The, I don't know, like 10 million hits, but most of them are Creative Commons licensed. So I think I've given away more hits than I've gotten for my entire channel because other people, you know, they just take them. It's like, yeah, let's run with them. And I'm going, yeah, like you'll ever get hits. And some of them have 3 million hits on them each. Oh, wow. Yeah. So tell me, when you say you didn't get responses from people saying, oh, no, you're wrong, is it that no one even responded to your claims or that people did respond, but you didn't find their answers satisfactory? No, nobody came up against me. Nobody. I've had such little resistance when it comes to this. And I'm going to steal. I make a lot of movie references and I steal a lot of lines from other people. But the comedian Bill Hicks, he said that life was just a ride. That could not be more true with me. Meaning I have gotten almost no resistance from from anybody the hmm. uh, when I made the clues not only did I was I not attacked and I don't count comment sections. I was, I was just gonna say have you no, read the no, comments no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 that that's just haters. I mean that's been around since the internet was born uh, What's what's the saying uh, if you can't say something nice don't say anything at all. No, no, that's not true so, If you can't say if you can't say something nice, you're probably in an internet forum somewhere <laughs> <laughs> what, what would you have imagined that – what form would you have imagined that critique would have taken? Did you expect scientists to I did. I really did expect someone in the field of astrophysics or astronomy or someone with a master's degree in some sort of physical science to come at me and, and say, OK, here's where, where you're wrong. What I didn't realize was when I made the clues, I kind of made them in a, in a shotgun pattern to where, yeah, you might be able to knock down a few things, but you're not going to be able to knock them all down. And if you can't knock them all down, well, you, you're probably not going to be able to critique the whole body of work. So you just don't. Uh, so the, the academics just stayed away from it. Uh, in fact, I, I had a couple of friends that were PhDs that, that told me, it's like, look, they have too much to lose. You don't want to be that guy that goes up against Flat Earth. And because remember, if they don't beat Flat Earth in the first 10 minutes, then they're already in trouble because they, they should – remember, this is 500 years of, of proven science, right? You should be able mm -hmm. to shoot this thing down instantly. 
And yet here we are two years later and just keeps getting bigger and weirder. And, uh, and, and any doubt I had, there was a guy from Buzzfeed that interviewed me at the conference and he was saying, what if you're wrong? You know, what if you're wrong? And I go, no, 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 that, that train's already left a long time ago. If I was wrong, I was going to be wrong in the first six months. So you don't have any lingering doubts or moments where you ever think, yeah. what if, what if the earth is an oblate spheroid? No, no. As a matter of fact, I've haven't had, I haven't even had an original question in probably nine months okay. to, right, to well. where, I mean, I, which is why, you know, people say, why don't you, 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 uh, you answer stuff differently in interviews. I'm going, cause I've heard it. Mm-hmm. At this point, seriously, you know how it goes. I mean, if it's going to get shot down, it's going to get shot down early. You know, somebody's going to come out and say, "Okay, this clue is absolutely wrong because of this. And this part is completely wrong because of this. And they just can't do it. Well, let's skip ahead then from your origin story, so to speak, to today. So today you say you got to go head to head with an astronaut. Did you feel like did you feel like he or she was able to respond to you? No. Oh, my God. No, no. In fact, it was everything I thought it was going to be. Uh, The guy's name, you can look him up, is Terry Virts, V-I-R-T-S. He's American, uh, did some shuttle stuff. I think the equivalent rank would be full bird colonel in the in the United States Air Force, even though the Air Force is a little different. I think it's commander in in the Air Force. But he, I mean, I tried everything. And remember, I knew it was going to be a short segment, you know, because it's a morning show on a national network. And when I got in there, I made sure because I, I did a little, I, you know, I like to look up anybody I'm, I'm going to be dealing with. And in his case, I knew his birthday. It was actually coming up Friday. Ah. And December it's be 1st. A, yeah, and it's his 50th on top of it. So I had to interrupt. I said, look, before we start, I just want to wish Terry a happy birthday. I didn't mm-hmm. mention how old he was. I said, it's a big one coming up. He didn't even blink. And he was in there in the studio. So he was in London, and I was being patched in through Skype. And the, as I went through, and we're, again, we're only talking 10, 12 minutes. As we're going through this, I'm addressing him. I'm using his name. I'm being polite. I'm being nice. He would not engage me. It was like he was talking through Piers Morgan and uh, the co-host, using them as a mediator, and never, never, he never even mentioned my name. Never mm-hmm. responded to anything, and that made absolute sense because, in fact, Piers. Uh, let's face it, Piers was protecting him because I was asking him a question. So remember, I had a very short list, and the the short list I have is pretty potent. And one of them, the things they said was uh, the blue marble shot, which is the first blue marble taken from space in 1972. The second one was taken two summers ago. Mm-hmm. 43-year gap. Nobody took a blue mar- marble shot of the Earth. Why? Piers didn't even wait three seconds before he diverted that conversation to Hillary Clinton and did I vote in the elections. <laughs> it was, it was okay. that quick. Of a, of a spin. And I am really, okay, because he couldn't answer. The answer, the, the astronaut in question can't answer. The astronauts are not meant to debate people. They're meant to say, they're just supposed to go on stage and say, the earth is a sphere. The space program was real. It wasn't fake. I'm an astronaut. I have pictures here. That's it. That's all they said. And on the flip side, yeah, it was good that he didn't attack me. I mean, he could have gone on the offensive, could have used uh, the, the host of the show and, and come after me. And he didn't do that either. It was the most uh, non-engaging conversation I've had with anyone in my life. And here we were supposed to square off from each other. So whatever. We'll, we'll meet again, I'm sure of it. Okay. So then you, would, you must assume that Terry Virts is lying. Oh, it's, uh, yeah. No, the, entire, the entire United States pa- space program isn't in on it. If, it's because some people wonder that. It's, well, you're talking about all of NASA. I'm going, no, no, no. Only the telemetry guys, the bosses of the telemetry guys, and, of course, the astronauts. But even the astronauts nowadays, I don't think they have to know everything. It's not like the Apollo astronauts where they knew a whole bunch of stuff and they told them why they were lying and it crushed them. They crawled into bottles and became recluses and so, then press conference. So you think when Terry Virts has gone up to space, he's been deceived? He's been in a virtual reality simulator? No, 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 no. Meaning he's, he's lying in, he's lying in a simulator. I mean, of course he's not, he's not being fooled. He's, he's in, he's in whatever, a CGI simulator or back in the days, just the, the vomit comet, the, uh, the zero G planes. But he's nowadays, remember, it's easy. You remember he's a soldier. He's the United States Air Force. You say he's lying in a simulator, but he's not, not telling the truth in a simulator. He's, just laying down in a simulator. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm so, just trying to figure out which kind of lying we're talking no, about. No, no, no. It's okay. He, what I'm saying is he's lying about being in space. Let's, let's just cut to the chase. Okay. There he's, we go. he's lying, absolutely lying about being in space. Okay. What he doesn't know is why he's lying. Meaning he's it, it, nowadays, you know, when you compartmentalize things, you can tell the soldiers, look, here's what you're going to do. And sorry, you can't. It's above your pay grade to even ask why. Like anything, you know, like spies go on missions all the time. They don't know the bigger picture happens with soldiers all the time. Look, you're going over that hill. No, we're not going to tell you the battle plan because your unit actually may be sacrificed. But we're not going to tell you that. Uh, in his case, he's told to lie, not not told why. Well, okay. I can believe that up to an extent using your metaphor, the soldier who goes over the hill doesn't know the exact plan, but she does know we're at war with whoever, right? My oh, sure, ultimate goal sure, sure, sure. is to find victory for my nation. So surely Terry Verts would have to be motivated by some sort of bigger plan, right? Well, you can – look, when it comes to soldiers, and I've known a bunch of them over my life, if you tell them uh, under the guise of national security that they're doing it for God and country, most of them are going to do it. Now, do they have an inkling of what's going on? Sure. People talk all the time. There's there's still gossip you know, chains. The, the Manhattan Project where you had 100,000 people working on the atomic bomb for the Americans – Lots of people talked, you know, but at the same time, they, they kept their mouths shut for the most part officially. In order to keep him from having a crisis of conscience, you just can't have him briefed on it. It's kind of like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Plausible deniability? Is mm -hmm. that the right, mm -hmm. right term? Mm -hmm. Where he's, as long as he is, doesn't know officially, kind of like, I, I hate to use this, but spouses run into it all the time. Until you know, absolutely know that your husband's cheating on you, he's not cheating on you. Mm. Because you don't want to believe it. So in his case, like, okay, yeah, he may know there's something wrong with the world. But until somebody slaps a folder on his desk, say, oh, yeah, by the way, here are the photos. Yeah, it's not what you think it is. Then he can probably sleep pretty easy because you want these guys acting as naturally as possible, which they do. You know, they're, they're floating around in their khakis and their polo shirts and their socks. Why? No shoes. I'm still trying to figure out exactly I think it has something to do with that shoes screw up the whole skidding thing. You know, they, they grip too much. This, this seems a little inefficient. Why, why do they hire so many astronauts? Why do they need such a proliferation of liars to uh, maintain this? Oh, it's, it's not as many as you might think. Uh, only 500. I mean, we're talking the history of any space, pro all space programs in total. Well, why not less than 100? You know, why, why so many? 500 people over 60 years, that's not that many okay. uh, compared, compared to, I mean, the Americans have some of them, the Soviets have some and some, and then, you know, JAXA, the European Union, the Chinese, and uh, I don't and know. And why, why have the whole space race where the Russians cede to America when America lands on the moon? Oh, that's an excellent, that's an excellent question. Uh, because the space race wasn't a race at all. How many races do you know when – and I remember the Time magazine. You can look it up, the Time magazine cover where you have an astronaut and a cosmonaut both sprinting in the you know the an animation or they're sprinting towards the moon. And yet when the Americans get there supposedly, the Russians just quit. Quit. I mean just shut down the program. It's like, oh, yeah, we're – I mean how many you, – you see that in a marathon race? Every first person crosses the line, everyone just walks off the course. No, no. You know how it was going to go. We get three people on the moon, the Russians get four. We build a small base, the Russians build a medium base. And Time Magazine then runs it, has the Cold War extended to the moon? That's what it should have been. And it was, would have gone on for decades and decades. But well, it was who, the uh, Who got to decide the winner then? Because that had socioeconomic. Uh, uh, the, the production value, actually. The Americans just said, look, we can actually. Because remember, in Russia back in then, the, the money wasn't the motivator. Hollywood had gotten better. The studio production in the United States had just gotten better. So, and you, and you can see why you had to pick one or the other because you can't have two production teams working in separate companies and try to come up with any sort of continuity. Uh, the, the ash, the, the ground has to look the same. The lighting has to look the same. You're never gonna be able to, to match. I mean, hell, do two studios in Hollywood nowadays across the street from each other, they would have a hard well, time getting So does this mean then that the Soviet Union and the US were secretly completely friendly with each other? At the highest level, yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. And I had a, a, a woman reporter down at the conference who actually gave me grief about that. She goes, you're saying that Russian and American aren't enemies. I'm going, well, from the, the, the grunt level, the troops, yeah, all the troops are told, you know, better dead than red and all this other crap. You know, we hate them, they hate us. 
And yet it was called a Cold War for a reason. We've never engaged directly with the Russians. I mean, only in movies have we ever done this. At the highest levels, yeah, they've, been, they've had our backs since the beginning. They were down there on the ice with us in So 1950s. the Cold War was just posturing? That was some sort of distraction or ruse? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's great theater was what it is. You got the two biggest kids on the block look, you know, giving each other the stink eye for decades, right? And, you know, threats here and there. You know, yeah, don't come over here. Oh, you don't come over you know, Just going back and forth. It's brilliant. And it worked, and including the space race. And... Her perfect example would be uh, if you looked up that Terry Virts, the astronaut I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So we're supposedly – it's supposedly high tensions, right, all the time between us and Russia. And yet Terry Virts supposedly during his last ISS thing launched from a Russian military base. It's in Wiki, right? So, so it doesn't include astronauts? So yeah, everyone hates each other except for scientists and astronauts. Come on. If we are pretending anyway with these launches, why would we then say that our space shuttle program is too expensive – and use Soyuz rockets to launch. What, what's oh, the utility in that? The whole thing has to be shut down eventually. And the, what they, the, it actually was pretty smart. The, even before social media, you could sort of gauge what America's response was to the space program in general. Like, for example, after night, you got to remember the, the whole space program, how, how the, the Apollo program got shut down was very clever. They shut it down technically because of ratings. They went, what, six times in five years, which is unbelievable pace. Supposedly nobody died, nobody got injured. You know, they just they went there and back so many times. And then in 1972, they said, yeah, there's just nothing there to see. And ratings are horrible. Let's just shut the whole thing down. Good night, everybody. And that was it. 1972, the, the Apollo program gets shut down. After that, they you know, the shuttle program was already ramping up. And then they figured, OK, let's just phase this thing out slowly because they less they don't need it anymore because no one's paying attention well i'm, now, I'm curious then what what were the decades of launching shuttles what was happening there in a shuttle launch would you agree that there was a bunch of solid fuel and liquid fuel oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. i mean it, oh yeah nasa no look 99 percent of nasa is real it's okay. real people i mean look the my next door neighbor when i was in boulder uh, just before I left, his name was uh, Wayne Ottinger, O-T-T-I-N-G-E-R. He was like the garage mechanic for NASA. I mean, I'm not kidding you. This guy, I mean, knew all the astronauts on a first name basis. They'd call him while I was at his house. I got to take care of his cat sometimes when he'd leave. And he'd go out to schools and, and give little lectures, you know, saying, this is the seatbelt that Neil Armstrong wore, okay. blah, blah. And he knew nothing about anything. Where am I going with this? There's thousands and thousands of people that work for NASA. They turn wrenches. They build, build fuel systems. So, and, but but that's a lot of money and time and expenditure. It's, it is. What, it, what are they doing with those rockets? Are they actually putting things in the upper atmosphere? No. Are, are no, satellites no, they're, a real thing? No. They're, no. Oh, no. Satellites are real, but they're just not on the top of rockets. And no astronauts ever sat on the top of a pile of liquid explosives. That's the, that's the last thing you'd want to do, because if you did this and you made a mistake, I don't know, like Challenger 1986, then you, you don't want to lose those people. But in that case, what happened was they had to witness relocation, you know, look those up, people up. They're out walking around under either their middle names or claiming to be their twin brothers. OK, it's, it's, sorry, I think I lost you for a second there. So. On sure. the one hand, you're saying they don't want to have these uh, rockets that can explode, and you use the example of the Challenger, which led me to think, okay, the Challenger was real, but now you're saying that there were survivors of the Challenger explosion, and they're walking around. No, no, no. I, what I'm saying is, is that you don't deliberately, you don't want to waste personnel if you can help it. Sure. You launch the rockets. There's nobody in the rockets at all. You arc them over horizontally as quickly as possible, dump them out in the sea. Look up something called the uh, the space graveyard, where NASA will admit, oh yeah, this is where we dump all our boosters in the middle sure. of the of the Pacific Ocean. When you do that, you know all the all the astronauts are sitting somewhere. You know, you we never. In fact, I I have to back up for a second. You want to watch some interesting footage. If look at the picture of first off the Challenger people before on the mission, and look at their helmets. And I I got to mention this because hardly anyone brings this up. Those helmets look so weird because they look like motorcycle helmets. And they don't look like normal space helmets. And I was thinking, okay, well, the space helmets weren't ready and they needed to pose for some shots. So they just doctored up some motorcycle helmets and, and, let them, and let them do that. But when you see some of the 80s footage, and I'm not kidding you, they're wearing these helmets back when they used to actually have cameras inside the cockpits while they were supposedly launching, right? And which was still simulated. 
And yet these helmets weren't attached to anything. It's supposed to be a pressurized suit. And you can actually see their necks. They're actual bare necks. And they were like had short sleeve shirts on and stuff. I'm going sure, like, looking it, at these photos, you know. And back in the 80s, apparently we didn't – again, it's the 80s. I was there. We weren't paying attention to any of that stuff. So they just got away with murder back then. The, the production quality was terrible. Anyway, sorry. B- back to your question. You don't put anybody in the, in the rockets at all just in case something happens, right? But if something happens, then, you know, you still don't lose any personnel, but you're going to relocate them somewhere. So the only, uh, well, the big one that we had was 86, where we lost seven people, including some teacher. And, you know, back then, this is way before the internet, you can just put them off somewhere. Who's going to know? Who's going to look for them? Their, and their spouses. Own, well, yeah. I, but that's fine. I mean, remember, these are all, except for the teacher, supposedly, they're all military people. So they know the uh-huh. risks and relationships okay. can get okay. Well, uh, but is there an actual payload on that shuttle or is it doing something other than just no. this no, theater? It's, no, it's just a freaking rocket. That's all it is. That's it's all as all as, theater. It, well, it is. But remember, we're talking about something that's so big. And I touched on this in, in various clues and other videos, something that's so big that money isn't an object, which also let me know that it, it just gave it more credibility because there's very how many how many conspiracies, do you know, that are bigger than money, because most conspiracies actually are ra- about money. But just it's the, the wastefulness of money. I also think of well, all of the footage like we don't just get one flyover from the International Space Station. We get tons of video and photos oh, yeah. from yep. satellites of very why, successful what? twitter stream yeah why create all that because you know i work in animation and i know how hard it is to create convincing looking footage in fact i've seen a project where we've tried to recreate the look of a planet and sure. it's difficult to do it takes a lot of people a lot of time and yep. i look at all that video footage and i say if we had to create that that would be hugely expensive and time consuming why, you're right you're- why do that Uh, Again, because you have to keep this thing going. I mean, money really is no object, but they splurge in some areas and skimp in others. Uh, With some of the animations nowadays, yeah, they're they're splurging. But think of, again, think of the uh, the Blue Marble shot from 72. They milked one pitcher, literally one pitcher from 1972 until 2015. And I knew this for an absolute fact because I got to see it for myself back in 2000 when I was trying to set up different pictures of the earth for different, I was running a tech support team in, in Boulder and I wanted to have different pictures of the earth, iconic pictures. I loved globe, the globe icon mm-hmm. for the different monitors. And I go and I'm running different Boolean strings in, in uh, the search engines and I'm literally seeing one shot. I'm not kidding you, just one shot. It was the Apollo 17 image. And this is in 2000. And I remember, and again, I couldn't see the forest for the trees. I'm going, first thing I thought was, NASA, you suck. I mean, your internet presence is horrible. You only have one picture. That's all I can find. And I moved on to something else. But it was literally because of that. And they kept it to where the, um, remember, the original iPhone, that background, that blue marble shot. They had to get a NASA consultant to create one in Photoshop. Well, it feels like we're saying two very separate things here now. We're saying that they didn't produce enough images, but then we're also saying that they produced too many images. Well, in, in, yeah, in some cases they do and where they can get away with it. Yes, they do. And where they can't, where they figure, okay, we need as, you know, as many cool little animations as possible. Yes, they also do that. But at the same time, they still don't spend the big money, like use the supercomputers and come up with a earth spinning on its axis from space with the weather morphing simultaneously. That would have been extremely expensive. And to date, we, we still don't have that. Well, we've seen time lapses from, um, the, from Himo, the Himawara satellite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, and look that's at it how again. far enough that it can see the whole planet. Oh, I know, I know. And you can see the weather morphing, but the Earth isn't rotating because it's geostationary, supposedly. And then you have the other version, which shows it rotating, but the weather isn't morphing. So can't get both? Can't get both? Again, a supercomputer could do this. I don't know. I don't know why that would be a standard. Why is it not good to have a geosynchronous <sighs> orbit and have photos from there? I don't look. All I can tell you is like the up until literally up until 2015 when we started asking for stuff. Oh, by the way, that Himawara satellite came out online in 2015. The still mm-hmm. shots came in the summer of 2015. Before before we started asking, before we started drawing attention to it, nothing of of this sort even existed. The closest thing we had was 1990 Galileo, which Matt Boylan I got a, during his sober moments actually pointed this out, where he said, "Look, he goes, there's a 24 hour." cycle of from the Galileo and the weather isn't morphing at all. The same freaking cloud pattern comes around. 
And we even called before, just before they released the pictures, we called pretending, well, it wasn't me, but one of our guys pretended to be a Hollywood producer, called up the NASA trademark office who has the stock stuff. And he goes, look, I need the earth rotating from space from a certain uh, altitude, you know, from, from way off. And he put them on speakerphone and the NASA guys know, well, no, we don't have it. We, we got nothing to give you. From like, that particular altitude? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because there's nothing there. So it seems sort of like an unusual complaint, though, to say we wanted these images from NASA. They didn't provide them until 2015 when we asked for them. That kind of right. sounds like they were doing what you asked for, right? They well, the, the the bigger well, that's just it. Even the stuff they produced though was horrible. Uh, the first thing they they showed was what 20 frames of the moon transiting in front of the Earth which didn't make okay where's the there's no hd we still are asking for hd shots again himawara i don't think counts but why was the moon transiting not in not hd and why was the color palette completely wrong you know we remember we see the moon up in the sky it's always that glowing glowing white color and yet the transit that they showed was this dark dark gray it's like why 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 is that happening exactly you want you want me to believe what nasa shows and i've answered this on several things including the the interview not today but the one from yesterday and they say what will it take to convince you i go okay give me a 4k camera or higher put it on a rocket on the pad turn it on do not turn it off is that to, to date that that footage never exists they always see whatever reason they always drop the camera off at the second stage put it on the freaking capsule or the payload and let that sucker go up there and let it run and let us analyze the footage Doesn't so exist. if someone did that and and there it was i'd quit flat earth tomorrow but really? but hang on are can we be confident that you wouldn't then say oh this is a doctored movie made by hollywood Again, we'd have to analyze the footage, but I would believe any of our guys, wait. anybody is, anybody that specialized oh, in the images. Wait, I, who's, I, who's our guys? Anyone from the Flat Earth community that specialized in the images, mostly the, the Globusters team, FE Core, Jaronism, those okay, guys. Well, so would you accept then that same standard from the people who believe in a globe Earth if they said, well, I'll believe in the Flat Earth as long as one of our guys, as long as a NASA person. Oh, agrees. sure. You sure, would accept sure, sure. that standard? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now you mentioned in your Flat Earth Clues videos that no one has ever taken a 360 degree panorama during a spacewalk because right. it can't be done. You can't break that fourth wall. But I'm sure now you've seen uh, the Russia Today footage. Yeah. Yes. Yep, I have. And we broke that down in less than 24 hours to where when they went over Florida, the image that we're showing on Florida, when we superimposed it with Google Maps, or I'm sorry, Google Earth, that that image should have been from 1,600 miles away. And yet they were showing, they were claiming it to be four. So if the Van Allen radiation belts start about then, tell me exactly where that footage is coming from. No, the Russia Today footage is crap. And plus, why why would Russia Today have to, to give it to us? Where, where are the Americans on this? Sorry. Not buying it. It, it okay. does feel though like you're asking for these certain proofs, and yep. then they provide them to you, and then you say, "Oh, never mind, never mind. That's not what I wanted. This isn't actually as good as I expected." No, it to be. no, no, no. Quite the opposite. You're going to show me something. At least make it consistent. Don't show me an image from Florida where the distance isn't anywhere close to to being what it is actually is. If, if you're going to show me something like no, no, no. I, plus, again, think of this statistically speaking. What, here's a good analogy for you. The jilted wife syndrome. Here's another wife syndrome for you. Um, man comes home after 40 years and the wife says, I'm divorcing you. And he goes, why? She goes, well, because in the 40 years I've been married to you, you've only given me one bouquet of flowers. The next day he comes back, he comes home with a bouquet of flowers. He goes, now you don't have to divorce me. And she's saying, you only gave me the flowers because I asked for them. See what I'm sort of getting at here? Statistically speaking, you can't tell me that Gemini and Mercury and Apollo and Soyuz and the shuttle systems and all the ISS up until this point, no astronaut in any exterior shot even accidentally turned on the camera and spun around 180 degrees or further. Never, ever happened. So pretty much NASA really couldn't provide anything to convince you because – it would be suspect immediately. Uh, it would be suspect, definitely. But they got to show me something that is at least somewhat consistent. The RT thing was was too obvious. We picked up on it. 
too quickly. Show okay. me, you know, show me something with less cloud cover and better perspective. Uh, the jilted wife metaphor is uh, <laughs> is a good one. I was just thinking about it, and I think that's true. The wife would say, "Well, what I'm looking for is this sort of consistency." Um, there you go. But that's a romantic relationship. I think if the wife was <laughs> saying, "I don't even believe that you know how to buy flowers." Then if he went and bought flowers, she would, in fact, be proven wrong, right? Mm. Mm. That's not bad. That's actually, I like that one. <laughs> well, like that thank one. you. <laughs> On interview number 161. <laughs> <laughs> finally, finally, Mark, it's a good question. Uh, I do. No, it's a, it's a good one. I like it. <laughs> well, let's let's head back down to earth for a bit. Ah, uh, uh, I see what you did there. T- talk about <laughs> some classic flat earth. One thing I really wanted to get your feedback on are those photos of Lake Pontchartrain, the causeway and, the, and also the power grids there, because right. I, I think most people acknowledge they are equal sized, but you can see them in photos because it, it's a sufficiently long array of power grids. You can see them going over a hump in the water. There's a definite curve to that. Uh, what is your reaction to that? My reaction is, and I wish I had the video in front of me, somebody, somebody beat that down. It didn't take him even, I think, a week to do it where they shot uh, some footage over a shorter distance and I can't remember the name of the visual effect but it bent it in the exactly same way and it was a much less distance the curve over the those those power lines you're talking there is way too exaggerated for a distance uh, oh, I've, the, I've been there and, and seen it with my eyes so. oh no 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 I'm not saying you can't see it with your eyes I'm just saying that the curvature doesn't match what you're seeing the actual curvature you're looking at an optical effect and I don't have the video in front of me. I I wish if I had that question. I know we're doing this uh, continuous thing, but sure. I, I promise I will give this to you. Well, even if you say it's exaggerated, there's still a curve. But not like that there isn't. No, mm. Not a chance. I mean, eight inches per mile squared, that's not, that isn't eight inches per mile squared. That is way more severe. And it is, and again, it's an optical effect. You are not seeing the curvature of the earth. That that squaring is, it's exponential. So, you know that. I know. Okay. I know. All right. uh, I was just curious. To Sorry, get no, no. I'll I'll give you the video when I get a chance, and and even if I gave you the video now, it's not going to do us any good because it's radio. Okay. But, <laughs> yeah. There, there well, was a guy we, that broke it down, and he did a fan, fantastic job of. It. All I can tell you is the video will show you that he shot it from a much less range, and he was actually looking on top of a bridge, and you could see it curving in the exact same way, and he overlaid it and compared it to the poncha train thing, and it was identical. He's going, no, you're looking at an optical bending. And it, it was great because we actually had uh, people on bicycles riding off into the distance right next to the bridge on, on one side of the bridge. And the same and the same thing was happening to them. Now, this that. is interesting because you're citing a, an illusion. But then when, say, meteorologists respond to that, that famous Chicago shot, we talked about it in one of our previous episodes from 52 right. miles away. You know, the meteorologist says that, oh, this is an optical illusion. Light is bending. That's why you see Chicago on this day and not others, then, you know, I've heard Flat Earth Movement members, even in that recent conference, cry foul and say, oh, you're trying to tell us it's an illusion. Different different type of illusion, though. D- different, because he initially called it a mirage, and any superior mirage, I mean, you, you've seen the videos. Some mirages be, are right side up and some are inverted. Depending uh, some on are, yes. Of the, Absolutely. And, and, and there is some atmospheric lensing that is happening on those buildings. Absolutely. But I think the Rob Skiba experiments dispelled that. But, but I, why don't you see that every day? Why do you only see that uh, under those particular conditions? Uh, I do not know. Okay. Can't, can't answer that for you. Fair enough. Okay. A couple other questions I had. So you mentioned that the dome that surrounds the earth is right. high resolution. It's impact proof. First of all, I have to ask, does it have pixels? Is it kind of like a display that, that we're used to seeing? Boy, that's, that's a good one because how could we even predict that we would have, and I don't even know what televisions are now. Are they 8K? I, I can't even remember it. They, they keep going up so fast. Well, consumer how could, models are, you know, 4K is kind of okay, the let's, upper end, but well, yeah, you can get 8K displays. Okay, let's say, well, let's say 4K, 8K. How could we even predicted that as little as 30 years ago? So when it comes to the tech that's being used in this structure, there is probably some stuff there that's way, way beyond what we have right now. I mean, I know that what the the different LED technology has changed like several generations just in just in 10 years. Whatever's being up used up there is extremely high tech. But then, of course, are we talking about a combination display system 
that's also impact proof or is there sort of like a barrier that they put on TVs that, uh, you know, an impact shield that's before it and it has nothing to do with the display system? I don't know. Okay. But it's 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 extremely high res. I know that. And as far as impact proof goes, look, if megatons can't punch through it, that's the, that's the best we got. Even in the Truman Show, some of the light fixtures fall down. Has there, <laughs> has there ever been any kind of degradation or mistake in the projection on the dome? No. As far as I can tell, no. Well, I, yeah, as far as I know. I mean, yeah, there might be some optical things that happened, but not from the Truman Show. You remember the Truman Show? The only reason that movie even happened was they had to create mistakes that wouldn't have ever happened in real life. I mean, that spotlight that was named Sirius, you know, just a standard stage light that fell from that sort of distance. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he walked into an elevator that had a false backing and all this other stuff. I mean, the Truman Show, they, they had to do that because otherwise they, he would have gone through his entire life. There would have been no movie without sure that that's the inciting incident. Yeah, the, the series of production mistakes. But as far as production mistakes here, no, this place was built very, very okay. well. No, and no, remember, no bad pixels on this display. Uh, as far as I know, there are any bad pixels I haven't seen when not anything consistent, not dead pixels. So who do you think built it? The big question, isn't it? I'm glad that you guys took a while. I had a radio guy ask that literally in the first two minutes. We like to build up to it. No, it's good. I was, Cause seriously, I was going really two minutes. So we're already to who, who built this place. It, it's two schools of thought, of course. And you probably heard me say it before, which is it's either an advanced civilization that is far beyond our technology. Or we're talking, you know, if you're a religious person, you know, intelligent design, handprint of God. I'm not saying that God built it, nor would I be arrogant enough to name which God, because there are several, depending on where you live in this world. Uh, but if it isn't a divine power, maybe somebody subcontracted out the work to an advanced civilization. One of those two, but I know it wasn't us. That's that's the thing I like to nail down for people. They say, why, you know, did we build it? No, we didn't build it. But didn't you write an article for a Christian publication saying that the round earth model is hiding God? No. Oh, God, no. No, no play on words there. If you're talking about they are hiding God with the greatest lie ever? Uh, maybe. I'm that having trouble was, remembering the title. No, no, it's okay. I didn't I didn't write any publication for anyone along those lines. but I But I haven't been shy about saying it either. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my clues was called They Are Hiding God. The Flat Earth Clues was not called that as a series, but somebody took the clues and retooled them and named them They Are Hiding God with the greatest lie ever. Part 10. Do, yeah. yeah. Do I think that, that there is a religious component to this? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe there's a real spiritual. Now, because it pulled me back to spirituality uh, and has pulled a lot of other people back, and there's a big uh, religious contingent in flat, inside the Flat Earth community. So for me, yes, I lean that way, but I'm not going to shoot down people that say, well, it's just an, uh, like the movie Contact with Jodie Foster, that it's an advanced civilization. Because I love that line in Contact where she goes, did you build this? And he goes, we didn't build it. We don't know who did. I was one of the best lines in the whole show. And that really said a lot. It's like they were humble enough to say, yeah, it's a system that's even beyond us. Mm -hmm. Whoever built it was gone long before we got here. So you're open to the idea that it was, in fact, an alien civilization or something like that and that there could be no higher sure. power. And by – of course. and But by alien, you mean just a foreign uh, – a, a, a civilization that's not our own because most people, when they define alien, they say, oh, you know, from Mars or Jupiter or some distant galaxy. I'm saying, no, no, no. We're talking – at most, at best, you're talking interdimensional. Uh, to where, you know, if there's another world like this, another building like this, it's probably, you know, they're very close by. Or they, I still think a lot of the things we see flying around up there, and I've seen them myself with night vision binoculars, it's pretty spooky, is that they're older versions of us. You know, if we're, we're not, again, we're not the first people to rent this apartment. And if we are version seven, who is version six and who is version five? And I think every you civilization. You are number six. <laughs> there you go. We we there's only I think every civilization has a certain duration. I have no doubt. I mean, look at the sunken cities off of uh, India or the sunken cities off of Japan or the Bosnian pyramids or Bimini Road or the, the pyramids, how old they might be that there was another civilization had to be moved out or relocated or whatever. So we had to get in here. And when we run our course, someone's going to follow in behind us, kind of like seniors in high school. And what's you the story with all the dinosaurs and the stromatolites, I don't know, things that we dig oh, up out er of the earth? Early versions. I'm not one of those guys that, that doesn't believe in dinosaurs. There's some people who say, no, dinosaurs are fake and all bones are fake. I'm going, well, yeah, I suppose, maybe. But for me, I buy it because the I, I, buy, I buy dinosaurs 
that they were just early versions of this sandbox because we would have started out bigger like anything like anything we do life imit imitates life to where you know like our old electronics used to be really really big and mm -hmm. then we made them smaller and gave them to the japanese and they made them too small to even use to where i just don't think the carbon dating system is accurate the carbon you can throw the carbon dating system away because it's just from version to version so whoever the version two is between version two and version three there's a gap there and time is kind of irrelevant, but you can do whatever you want and, you know, make make changes along the line. So well, I think we started carbon, out. Carbon dating oh. only gets you back about 50,000 years of reliable dating. Then you go to other methods. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying that like even in our history, we've got what, 5,000 years of unbroken history. And then, you know, then it gets sketchy and then we have to start taking guesses. So for me, I, it's this is a re this is this is not only is this not a one off, but it's a completely reusable system where, you know, the old myths and legends about how there was light and darkness. There was no sun and the moon in the sky. And the sun was first and eventually added the moon and eventually mm -hmm. added the stars. And that the, all the continents were grouped up in the center. And I say center because in a flat world, it makes much more sense. The continents are in the center of the big Pangaea con continent. And then they spread out or they get spread out over time. How does Pangaea work on a globe exactly? Uh, not as well. Plate tectonics? Mm -hmm. Plate tectonics works on a flat model too. Sure. <laughs> sure, but your question was how does it work on a globe? Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Play talk play time, short. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Question answered. Well, I was going to ask when we were talking about faultiness in the dome, what are asteroids and other objects that fall from the sky? The only, yeah, and that, that was like a question I got in my first week. I, 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 my co-host at the time, he, he came up and he's going, well, it's kind of like, you know, throwing little pebbles into an aquarium. As opposed to everything else would be part of the display system, even comets. But anything that actually gets close to the ground or enters the Earth at atmosphere, just take a piece of metal ore and use a rail gun of some technology, fire at a shallow angle, try not to aim at any cities, which is why that one in Russia a few years back, I think, got a little dicey. And that's about it. Oh, and then so they open they, up a hole in the in the dome. Yeah, what? No, I don't. I don't even think you have to open up a hole in the dome necessarily. It's hard to say what whatever the mechanisms up there wouldn't be too. I don't think it's necessarily part of an automated process. I I think there is some manual systems here. Uh, meteors might be one of them, although you never know. I mean, I've it's seen like one some of those 4D shows where they they show you the screen, but they're also blasting air at you and and running bumps under your your. Oh bum. sure, sure. I mean, think think about this. Think of the fantastic automated systems. If this was a giant building, you know, it's circular in nature. I mean, yeah, I suppose on the outside it could be square, but like the the jet stream runs in a circle, you know, a circular pattern. If you you lay it over the AE map, the underwater conveyor systems run in a great circular pattern when you're on an AE map. Uh, the magma systems, we don't know because we can't actually go down and test them and measure them. And, and people gave me crap. They said, well, the magma systems have to be organic. And I go, nah, really? Would you leave that to be organic? Because it, you, you talk about deception from our governments, from religion, from all these other bodies, but it seems like whoever put this together had deception in mind. Uh, yes, in yeah, and that is a bit of a quandary, isn't it? Because, but is it much of a deception if you were meant to discover it? Meaning, is it is it not so much a, a deception as just part of a journey, a part that's being hidden from you temporarily? And I know like I'm a probably, Santa Claus myth kind of thing. Uh, only opposite, where in this case you're you because remember Santa Claus is real and then he isn't. Although CNN keeps saying he's real every year. That's a whole other thing for another time. But in this case, you were meant to find out the true nature of the world eventually. And I think we were naturally supposed to probably figure it out in, I don't know, the late 70s, maybe the 80s. We're behind schedule. Well, I mean, the government finds out first. They drag their heels for a while, delay it. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we're at this point, I, I love to quote the, um, if you guys know who Terrence McKenna is, mm -hmm. he was the guy that made uh, Time Wave Zero and went out to the drugs, you know, in the jungle, a whole bunch of drugs came out with mad mathematical equations. And he said that the entire universe was based off of novelty, which I thought was brilliant. And he said that novelty and the world would end in 2012. Because he goes, it has to end because novelty seems to crash into the floor with our civilization in 2012. And I go, what if, what if it was a little different from that? What if that only novelty? Think about anything we've come up with uh, new since 2012. We've been rehashing and redoing and rebooting and redoing any, anything that's out there in, in just about every form of media. What I'm saying is I think our civilization has come to basically the end of the story. We've jumped the shark, if you know what that term's from. Yes, <laughs> yep. the fawns. Uh, yeah. So good. Well, let's say 
Uh, let's say, okay, so the creators, kind of uh, whoever put this system together, wanted us to eventually figure it out. The government definitely does not. They they understand, but they, they don't want us to. How is it that you can then publish all these videos without any repercussions? Excellent question. And I think it's because, look, I'm not some prophet or savant or anything like that, nor nor am I special when I'm working for the government. And but you've, I'm being, you've turned a lot of people onto Flat Earth who have yeah, now I, started to make I their have, own videos. What, why, what hasn't, I why hasn't one of those rail guns in the sky shot a asteroid your way? <laughs> or, or why haven't I, I had somebody that showed up my door with two briefcases, one has money and one has a gun in it, and they sure, say, you, yeah. choose, you choose? Uh, it's because there's something else to it. Look, there's a lot of very, very intelligent people that are, are at work here. And by that, I mean the powers that be, meaning we're not even when I said well, I'm not re meeting any resistance. I mean, the whole flat earth community is really not meeting much resistance at all. Uh, the, the big ones, of course, would be YouTube and Google to where YouTube is. not you know, it's recommending. I, I can't tell you the amount of people that have said they got into flat earth because of one of two things in YouTube, because it's recommended recommended for you on the side, even though you were looking up JFK eight flat earth videos for whatever reason. And then autoplay, the autoplay feature, it's like you've been watching a video on Bigfoot. Now, flat earth for the next three hours. That well, shouldn't happen. Why, why would YouTube do that and not show you Britney Spears videos instead? It's, exactly. I think it's because flat earth is only part of a bigger picture here, meaning that should actually worry people. If flat earth is the left jab, if you know boxing, then what is the right hook? Meaning flat earth is the frame. Just a frame for the canvas. But Meaning, if, well, hang on. If, I mean, you're saying that they that NASA spends billions keeping this secret. Oh, sure. But then you're also saying, you're oh, exposing if people it. find out it's not that big a deal, which one is it? Well, yeah, no, 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 no. It's, it's billions it's, of dollars to produce this stuff. It, you know, why wouldn't they react more violently to uh, you? It, <laughs> you. <laughs> well, no, no, because it's both. It's both what you were just saying there. Meaning, yeah, they've been spending their money, but it's all about timing. You, the old uh, FDR saying, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he goes, only give the population as much truth as they can handle. People were not ready in the 1950s for this. Not even close. They, they, they or at least they didn't think it, w it was possible to, to deal with a civilization. So think of all the things that we put in place since then. To remember, uh, a good, good version of this would be the old criminal thing. Get your story straight. Think of what we've put in place. We had to, in my opinion, you had to wait for not just internet, but high-speed internet. Everything is high-speed, including social media, to where, and the big thing is, is, is smartphones on top of it, to where everybody can be spun the same story in 30 minutes or less, or your pizza's free type thing, where everybody, if you want to spin a story, if you want to release anything to the public right now, you could do a broadcast out there and every industrialized com country with smartphones could all get the same story simultaneously. So yes, yeah, spending money as far as keeping dragging this thing out for the last six decades or whatever, uh, five, five decades, that that's, that's money well spent because you've got, it it's all comes down to the rollout. And now they're, I think they're allowing this to happen because I think there's something else in, in mind. I just don't know what that is. It's an act three. If you, you know, if you follow the stage thing, what is involved in that act three? I think it's one of two things. It's either a kumbaya, I'd let, you know, I like to think get glass half full, kumbaya golden age moment where everyone realizes, hey, we're part of the same system. Let's not fight anymore. Or you turn it into something, you know, old school biblical which it's hard to say which one. I think it's almost a toss up right now. If I may toss a couple questions at you, just sort of how do you explain this sure. phenomenon in the flat earth model? Uh, sure. One would be seasons. Why do we have seasons? Seasons. Uh, record needle on a record player. Old school. The As the record plays, the needle goes in and the needle goes out. Rob Skeeve did a, a great anim animation on that where the sun and the moon, well, mostly the sun, uh, tracks in towards the center slightly and probably even changes elevation. And then tracks out. Okay. So is, is the sun just a projection on the dome or is it running on a track? Oh, that's such a good question. And I, I, I honestly, I wish I knew the because I there's several different ways you could go with this. It really depends. And I don't want to use a biblical perspective because Enoch isn't was never a canonized, canonized book. But if you believe <laughs> the whole not. Yeah, if you believe the whole Enoch thing, the sun is on some sort of track. But there's other people that have, have kind of speculated that 
maybe the thing we see in the sky is sort of like it, it's sort of a lens projection. You know, like when you take a magnifying lens to sunlight and mm -hmm. you point it on the ground and that little spot is super, super bright. I mean, mm -hmm. it's hard. It's hard to look at. If you focus that on some sort of reflective surface, could you sort of generate the same sort of thing? I, I don't know. It, okay. It's 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 interesting, though. All I can tell you is the sun is really, really small compared to what mainstream science tells us. Well, speaking of things going in and out, uh, what about the tides? How does tides, that happen if not from the moon? Oh, no, no worries at all. And then that makes sense, too, because uh, that you would ask that because the tides wouldn't be a gravitational, a direct, a directional gravitational force. That would be way too tricky from something as small as the moon. Uh, if, if the moon was like less than 50 miles wide, uh, it would have to be controlled down below. No different, actually be in the same process sort of as gravity. I mean, remember gravity, if you believe mainstream science is, you know, they can't tell you what it is. They can only tell you what it does. Uh, I consider, you know, when I say gravity is a molecular magnet, I try to break that down. It kind of sounds like what mainstream science is anyway, but the difference is, is that mainstream science says that it kind of pulls straight down towards the core uh, at slight angles, whereas mm -hmm. I say, well, in a flat model, it just pulls straight down. If you had a molecular magnet, remember, we build this into physics engines now. We have been in software for 20 years. It, doing the tides, that's just a slight variation of it. Okay. Uh, so, all right. So it's some force we don't fully understand, but it's applied right. just to water to make it rise and lower at certain times. Yep. All right. Now, what about uh, a Foucault? Is that, am I pronouncing this right? A Foucault pendulum? Foucault, Fou Foucault pendulum? Yeah. How does that uh, work? Foucault pendulum. That's a that's a tough one because I'll, there's there's two schools of thought here. There's a group out there in our community that says that it really that it's that it's kind of a myth that it's you know it depends on how it's how it's launched and the direction it's launched and yeah it tends to move but. There's no consistency in in the uh, the different pendulums, and for me, I, honestly, I don't really care that much because for me, it's just another form. It's just another part of the whole gravitational thing that that would be part of this mechanism down here. Meaning, if you wanted to look, if you have a molecular magnet underneath this thing, that means you also have a magnetic north that's underneath this thing. Which means if you want to simulate something that that appears to simulate some sort of rotation, you could. Uh, but for me, honestly, I, I don't even pay so, attention. To so if I set up a pendulum where no scientist could know I was doing it and, you know, set up a little magnet underneath it, would it not work the way that it does at a observatory? Don't know. Okay. Uh, honestly, it's one of those things. I, I could refer you to a whole bunch of different videos. It's not one of the things I focus on. Okay. Thinking of our um, antipodal friends down in Australia, why, why is it that they see the moon kind of upside down from how we see it up in the northern hemisphere as well as the constellations? Uh, software instancing the projection systems that we, again, we've been using, I can only say this cause I was in the development world for a while, uh, have gotten so advanced now that we can display oh, pretty. So like a lenticular display where you can see different images from different angles. Yeah, we can we can do stuff now based on even regions or even individuals to where if I'm on one side of a, a let's say a football field and you're on the other side. We both see, you know, you could both say that we're seeing the same belt of Orion and you'd say, uh, well, my center one is blue. And I say, no, my center one is red. Who's who's right? We're both right. This is a so lot of work being put into that deception. I know. Yeah. I you know, know but what keeps striking me about all this, Mark, is that your explanation is so is so involved. It requires so many moving pieces. It requires this massive deception involving sure. hundreds, maybe thousands of people. There's maybe tracks, maybe projections, maybe a dome. Some oh, no, no. Of, there is there okay, is some there is sort a of dome. structure up there. Oh, yeah. Don't <laughs> um, push on that. This magnetic force we don't understand. Whereas the globe Earth model, I only need to know one thing. It's so much simpler. And usually our standard of evidence is, well, what's the simplest explanation for all of these phenomena? All right. Here's, and I can counter that with this. You say that the globe model is simpler. And yet, I don't have my models again. We're not on video. But if I held up a little globe in one hand and I held up a little miniature sports stadium in the other, here's where we differ. You say that mine is much more complex and much more involved. Here's the thing, that globe that you're holding in your hand, it does not survive on its own. As a matter of fact, the system in which it needs to survive is so, not only complex, but so unbelievably massive in scope that it's orders of magnitude more complex than what I've got in my hand. Because what I've got in my hand, this little, little sports stadium, little model I've got in my hand, that's it. 
I could set it on the table. It runs on its own. Well, Perfect. I'm not talking it, about the complexity of the elements. I'm talking about the complexity the of the theory. explanation. Yeah. Well, I, same thing I think applies, meaning uh, try to define to me every aspect of quantum physics in less than, I don't know, 10 years. How many, how many different aspects of the universe mm -hmm. they're still trying to figure out just to justify our globe existing? Where again, I look at the sports stadium and I'm going, look, it's mechanical. It's a series of magnets and barriers and elements that we can't describe and some electronics. Works pretty good as long as 99.9% .9 of the people buy it, as long as they believe the illusion, that's what you go with. You don't have to build it. Because lots of people will say, well, isn't there a solar system outside of that little stadium? Isn't there a, a universe outside? I go, why? why? Why would you have to build it? Carl Sagan he goes, look, it's a huge waste of space you know, for, for what, what's out there. These huge tracks of nothingness in the universe. Sure. Whereas this, this is, I mean, look, every time, and trust me, I mean, I spent a long time looking at this thing, trying to build it myself, trying to say, okay, if I had to build this, and as I was building it, I was really going, this is so much more elegant. I mean, yeah, there's moving parts, and there's things you know, doing this and that, but it works. Well, yours also requires an outside creator, which requires an entire outside world, right? You have to build yes. from the ground up all over again. As opposed to what? The Big Bang that happened from nothing? Y well, I don't know. Y yes. <laughs> oh, no, no. That's okay. You can say it. That's fine. No, I mean, no. but that is that's yes, still I... a, a simple starting. You know. Right. So, something like the Big Bang. Sure. Okay. Wait, is that a question? No, no you, you asked as opposed <laughs> oh, to that. No, okay, yes, okay, as good. opposed right. to that. One thing I want to know is why don't we see more active adventuring, discovering amongst the Flat Earth community? Why aren't people going out? We have drones. People can charter boats. Why, why don't we see people going to the wall itself and trying to get photos beyond? Because that's always my inclination when I hear these things. I think, well, let's just go test it. This sounds, sure. this sounds very testable. Why uh, can't you bounce something off the dome and film that happening? Right, right, right. Gotcha. Well, the first aspect would be money. <laughs> Plain, plain and simple. It's just not that easy to get funding. However, remember, we've only been doing this a couple of years. Yeah. And only recently have we come across, because it was it was a matter of time before we all of a sudden reached people with the deeper pockets. And so, yeah, that is in the works as we speak. So the, uh, more advanced experiments. I don't know about trying to breach the ice because they've had a long head start down there. I don't think anybody's going to do, be doing that anytime soon. The We'd Antarctic like to treaties, go with you if you try it. Uh, that'd be nice. I also would be nice to try to go after the North Pole because remember it was the North Pole that started this whole thing where, you know, Admiral Byrd didn't go down the South Pole first. He went to the North Pole in 1926 and that's where all the, the myths and legends started, not about the flat earth, but about the hollow earth. And yet he spent the rest of his life in the South Pole. But anyway, yeah, th sorry, I digress. Uh, yeah, it, money is the is the big reason why it hasn't hasn't gotten any further. But I think we've done a pretty bang up job in two years so far. Made Our numbers are hell of a lot are... of YouTube videos, that's for sure. And yeah, uh, yeah we've yeah. seen uh, quite the growth in the flat Earth movement. Uh, <laughs> would you say are there any arguments that you've kind of backed off from over time, or or ones that you see other flat Earth proponents using that you kind of wish they wouldn't? No, I mean, there's of course in any group you're gonna have difference of opinions. The problem, the, several problems in the flat Flat Earth movement. One is when the longer you're in it, because you're you're still hungry, you're craving you know more answers. You're not you all of a sudden not become as satisfied with certain things. So some people are trying to get away from the AE map and do more advanced maps because they're saying okay, there's a it's part of a toroidal fetal field or it's a wraparound Pac-Man map or it's you know it's a different shape. But they're they're generally in the minority. The only school of thought that I even disagreed with. Because most of the flat Earth community is, is still pretty unified, you know, with the exception of the little jealous squabbles that happen here and there, uh, is the dome versus no dome argument. And it's still in the majority dome. But there's some people that say, oh, infinite plane. And I know those people are like, oh, I don't want to be fenced in. And that's the whole point. No, mm. human beings don't like being confined. I go, OK, if you do that, though, you're going to run into the same problem as the globe. And one of the big issues there is the atmosphere, which is does the massive vacuum power of space not rip off the bleeding edge of the atmosphere. And, you know, I know mainstream science say, well, gravity is completely counteracting that. I was going, eh, I don't know well, about a, that. A lot has been ripped away, you know, according to mainstream science, but, you know, but the, what's the, left is held in by gravity, you know. Yeah, I know that's what they say, but I mean, I had a vacuum expert on my show the other day, and he's and he was talking about some of the tolerances used on the ISS, and I didn't even know the vacuum was measured in tor 
T-O-R-R, weird name. And he goes, there's no way. He's going that, he goes, the ISS cannot survive the, in, in how they describe it. He goes, the materials used, not, not a way. He goes, if it was a submarine, yeah, you'd have a chance. That's heavy steel. He goes, that aluminum can up there, it'd be gone. It'd just be obliterated. The pressure's going the opposite direction in that situation. Exactly. He, what he was, goes, oh, what was the vacuum expert's name? Uh, oh, wait. No, I'm not supposed to give. I'm sorry. I can't give you that name. I was going to give it to you. Okay. Uh, if you want to talk to him, though, I can put you in touch with him. Oh, sure. What, is, if, he, is he in hiding? Uh, no, no, he's not in hiding, but there's some guys that want to remain anonymous, you know, because they're employed at certain companies. I, I mean, see. out of the guys that I've talked to, I mean, yeah, there's some people that come out and they're they're fully prepared, you know. But there's other guys who are like, no, no, I don't want to get in trouble. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Like the uh, the airline pilot that uh, worked for, the, I think, a Dutch airline. Oh, she got grounded because she believes in flat earth. And the uh, company doctor said, yeah, we can't we can't have you flying as long as you say that. So, mm. but then she gave out her name, which was great. Although she was like regretting. She goes, can I retract it? I go, it's a little late. <laughs> It was Once like it's six weeks. Yeah, it's like six weeks ago, and it's been mirrored. I don't know what good it's going to do to pull mine down. So, anyway, what else can I answer for you? We, we don't want to. We don't want to abuse your time here. You've been very no, no, generous. No, with right. Okay. Sure. Well, I can't ask you. You you believe in the dome, so I guess asking whether Mars is a a sphere or not is oh no 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 no. That's a good question anyway, because I I like answering that one. Because I get that actually from a lot of you. I, I got into a heated argument with a guy, an amateur astronomer, who kept – the thing was he kept going down the same road. And I, I know I'm not wasting time when I, do, when I say this. He said, look, I've seen the moons of Jupiter with my telescope. I go, fine. Walk into a planetarium with a pair of binoculars and look at Jupiter. Does it look spherical? Yes, it does. I go – and he goes, yeah, but you're in a planetarium. I go, yeah, you're in a building. If you walk out – who does it say you're not in just a bigger building? And then he he followed that with at least three or four more examples. Like, I've seen the rings of Saturn. I'm going, uh, see the first first explanation? And they, he just kept going with it. And I was going, come on. It's just part of the display system. So, sorry. No? Okay. Yeah. So that's a projection as well? Oh, yeah. Mars. I mean, look, planets are just bigger lights. So where are these things being projected from? Inside or outside the dome? It's a rear projection uh, system. Uh, I yeah, is it rear or front projection system? Uh, well, I'm sorry, not front. Uh, integrated. Uh, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's either integrated or rear. Tough call. I mean, given given that there might be a durability issue, I mean, but again, it could be holographic. I, it's hard to say because I, I don't know the tech. It could be one one or one of several things up there, but it's but it's literally part of the same system. So Star, stars, planets, comets. Uh, would be all part of one system. So the pictures we've seen from Hubble, those are all what? Oh, manufactured. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely manufactured They're since day cool one. Pretty cool looking. Oh yeah, I mean now, okay. Let me let me put a caveat to that though. If you had, let's put it this way: if you had really really good resolution, maybe when you zoomed in, you did. I mean, in fact, I joked about something. Oh god, a couple of years ago now. Where I came up with a term, I don't know if it's a real term, it's called Mandelbrot resolution. Yeah, I was going to say, if you have like a fractal display. <laughs> yeah, like a fractal in, thing. Infinite resolution. Exactly, had a random generator to where if your camera zoomed in, you just kept seeing, you know, more, you know, more deeper and deeper and deeper stuff. Sure, it's possible. Sure, sure. One, one of those two. Either way, it, it's either, either way, whoever's taking the pictures or manufacturing the pictures is... Why? It seems like if it's projected internally, then you know we'd see the rays going up. Oh, you mean? Oh, yeah, from down. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. It's if not going to be projected yeah, from the Antarctica Center in Buenos right, Aires. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not going to be project. Oh, God, I'd hope not. No, it's not going to be like like the old school planetariums, which we've been using since the seventies, where it was literally the projection system was in the middle of the room, which is really really the big reason why it was shaped like that. Is so that you know everything would would project out in in that fashion. Uh, so no, I don't think it's projected on the ground either. Thinking back to your the flat Earth clues videos in number seven. You talk about how there are no direct flights from, let's say, Australia to South America or Australia to South Africa. And so immediately when I saw that, Carrie and I both looked up flights by Qantas that are direct flights. Yep. But in, Qantas flight 64. In, yep. in video nine, you, you said, OK, well, there are some. But then you said, well, now we have a new question, which is, you know, why do they disappear from GPS? Right. I've tried to track them on the website. So I called our mutual friend, Spencer. Uh, you don't know him, but Carrie and I do. Um, okay. He's a pilot. Pilot and asked him 
about that because I thought, oh, that's a really interesting question. Does GPS not cover those regions because it's too expensive or something? And he said, no, the, the satellites that power GPS, they do travel around, they cover all areas. But what happens is that the telemetry data sent from the, from the planes back out to the various receivers that then transmit that data of their whereabouts to you is all radio powered. And so it doesn't have that long of a range. So they're still getting accurate GPS locations on the plane, but they're not able to then communicate that out because they're too far away. But then when they get close to the destination at the time they're expected to, then the positioning resumes. Does cool. that make sense? You no, know, it does. And, and I actually heard this before. Okay. Well, I and, would assume and, so. You put that out two years ago. In that case, I'd say, again, show me the coordinates. Show me the routes. Show me from a pilot standpoint. And I know he probably can't give out that info or whoever you're talking to, but give me, give me some data along those lines. Oh, no I think one... he'd be happy to give out all that he had, Spencer. Or you're talking about the hypothetical pilot on this Qantas flight. No, no, no. no. Well, I mean, somebody, well, actually both would be nice, but I actually wouldn't care so much about the Qantas flight. Just any data that shows the latitude and longitude complete from, you know, whatever location, whatever location in the Southern Hemisphere. Doesn't even have to cross to the Northern. So are you imagining that a bunch of people board a plane, get on it, and what what do you think does happen on that flight? Yeah. How oh, did, no, no. How do I they think, get from I, A to B? No, no, no. They get there. They absolutely get there. I'm saying that the planes are only tracked approximately, meaning uh -huh. it's, it's not just, yeah, of course, the pilots, every pilot is going to want to know where they are. But I think the pilots are fed the same thing everybody else is. They're fed approximate data. But you know, the, the whole beginning of this argument was that on the, let's see if I can get it right this time, azimuthal equidistant projection right. uh, that you have these distances that are too far because now Australia is so far away from the tip of South America or South right. Africa that you can't get there in the times that the globe would predict. But I don't think we have any problem with the flights starting where they're supposed to and ending where they're supposed to right. in the right amount of time as and, the globe would predict. Right. So what problem remains? Gotcha. No, no, no I, I hear you. And that is the one big flaw in the map that we have been working on for a while now, ah. which is which is the scaling. People have been talking about this for a while. One of the reasons why the advanced maps have been coming up, because there's something wrong in the scaling that we can't quite put our finger on. Well, we wish and, you luck. Uh, yeah, it's been driving some of these guys nutty because they, they've been trying to use 3D modeling and trying to bend the continents a little bit, saying, okay, there's something happening there. Well, what um, I would love yeah. as a test would be to take a boat and sail around Antarctica and see how far you go. Oh, yeah. Well, heck, the easier test would be you don't even have to take a boat. Uh, I came up with this a while ago. You only need a, like one boat and one plane to do it. Uh, you could take two boats technically if you wanted to save time and one go clockwise. Wait, my plan only involved one boat. <laughs> well, yeah, but it take too it take too long. You could do it tech if you want to prove it. You could prove it in less oh. than twenty four hours. Oh, I see. You have two boats and they they head in opposite directions and where well, do they meet if up you and you, when? Yeah. yeah, if you want to use boats, but the better one would be again if you had the money to do it. You take one boat and one plane. The boat doesn't even have to move. You take the boat and you just put it and park it in one spot, and the plane goes one direction and bypasses GPS. You ignore the GPS coordinates and you just keep you know, the Antarctic coastline somewhere off your left or right, depending on which you're going. And you should be able to circle back around and cross that boat in 20 hours. I don't think you Maybe. need the boat, Mark. I think it could yeah, be what do you, what do you, what do you, sure, do you yeah. All right, well, what are you gonna use as a marker if you don't use a boat? Oh, I don't know. Land mark? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, you're assume, I'm assuming that you don't actually make a beachhead on Antarctica. Mm. Nah. So, well, hey, you can use McMurdo Station or something. Start there. Again, if you could bypass the treaty, yes, you probably could. I don't think they would allow uh, one of those flights to, to pull that off. But yeah, you couldn't use McMurdo. I, I wish we had the clout to make that happen. So what do you yeah. think of like the experiment that B.O.B. wants to do where he uh, goes up and sees the curve or lack of it for himself? Uh, the, the whole, yeah, that whole thing. No. No. <laughs> I, I have no idea what he was doing by even saying such a thing. Look, I appreciate him, he, you know, nominated for Grammy, that whole thing. But listening to him after that, you know, he went to hiding for like a whole year after he did that little album rap battle with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mm -hmm. And then after that, he I heard him on an L.A. radio station. And it was on video, too. Man, that guy does not interview, interview well. 
I mean, he's yeah. Anything he does at this point, I like. Uh, I just take it with a grain of salt. Okay. But I mean, don't you think that's a good experiment, trying to see the curve or flatness yourself? Well, if I was going to do that, I would. There's, in fact, somebody suggested to me recently. They said, "Wouldn't you be better off? You know, what about building your own rocket, getting a whole bunch of money, and and going through a private rocket program?" Like sort of like Mike Hughes. Uh, are we going to talk about that? <laughs> I was going to ask you what you thought. All right, about all right. That. We'll we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and that is, if you build your own rocket system, by the time you got through the, the, the different levels of trying to build your own rocket of that of caliber, you'd mm -hmm. be better off just paying one of the existing rocket programs to bolt a 4K camera onto the side of their thing, you know, however you want to do it, lobby or whatever. And then it'd be way, way more cost effective. Yeah, but come on, Mark. You would look at that video and say it was fake. Not necessarily. Again, mm -hmm. if, if images are tough to again, why it's why they kept that Apollo 17 image, that blue marble shot for so long, because people are scared about creating a fake image is a daunting task because you know there's nerds out there. It only takes one, one guy in the middle in his underwear at three o'clock in the morning in Nebraska. It's also it's really hard to get a, a probe out that far to take a photo. Well, that could it? be another reason. Yeah, maybe. But, but, I mean, but I still yeah. don't get what the actual problem is with B.O.B.'s plan. Well, okay. I don't. You just I, don't I trust his ability to. Uh, I, I don't. It. I don't think there's necessarily a problem. I just don't think he's got a plan at all. I think he's just. He's just talking. Just saying stuff. Yeah, he's just saying stuff. Okay. He, I don't think. I don't think if anyone actually gave him a ton of money, he didn't know what to do with it. So from someone else, you you might find it a, a useful. Yeah, yeah. I, I, again, I I don't know the guy, but I know as far as flat Earth stuff goes, he's been kind of a. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's made some. He generated quite a bit of publicity for that. I am thankful. The rest of the stuff, I just wish he'd stay out of. Now, speaking of him, you know, he also doesn't believe the Holocaust happened or that slavery ever existed. Yeah. Um, what do you think of those sorts of conspiracy theories? When I, everybody in the conspiracy world, and okay, a lot of people in the Flat Earth community come from some other conspiracy group. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's got their top 10, and honestly, you compared them, everyone had wrote them out on sheets and compared to each other. Ooh, they write it out on a sheet. What's your top 10? Oh, that's just it. I don't have a top 10 anymore. Ah, okay. uh, they, it, anymore. Flat, Earth, Flat Earth has basically knocked everything off the list. I mean, yeah, I had my favorites back in the day, if you want to know what they were. Uh, you know, like 9-11. My favorites were the American ones, uh, the big ones. Mm, um, JFK, 9-11. Uh, Pearl, Pearl Harbor oh. and, and uh, the moon landing. Haven't heard the and, Pearl Harbor one. Now, those oh. used to be your favorites. Do you still believe all those Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, Flat, flat Earth, actually, it, all that does is makes you revisit the conspiracies you already knew. In fact, there's very few conspiracies that don't dovetail into the Flat Earth in some way. Because remember, if we're in some sort of building, then all the conspiracies just exist inside the building. The only conspiracies that don't would be like Richard Hoagland's secret space program where there's 10 million people living on the moon and hundreds of thousands living on Mars. That <laughs> Those two can't exist simultaneously. But yeah, I still, no, I still believe in, in everything. In fact, I... And more open, Flat Earth is the most open-minded test you could ever do to yourself. I've seen conspiracy guys that absolutely believe in everything except for Flat Earth. And they, they actually just fight tooth and nail against Flat Earth. I, now I've gotten to the point where I can't even judge people. I, I will not laugh anybody out of the room for pretty much anything. I mean, you could come in and say, yeah, I knew a guy who knew a guy who said that Elvis had Bigfoot's baby. <laughs> and normally I'd be like, come on. And I'd say, you know what? I'll, I'll give you 60 seconds. <laughs> what, do you, what do you got? I loved, I loved to hear it because honestly, how, who am I to judge? I opened my day with flat earth. That's, that's my, sure. that's my coffee. So yeah. I, I can't judge anybody. Impossible but yeah, things I still, before I still breakfast. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, we would give them 60 seconds as well. Yeah. Yeah. We, we <laughs> Maybe appreciate not. that. Well, how has this, uh, how has this affected your life? Oh wait, no, you know what? Actually, I wanted to ask you about, uh, Mike Hughes. Yeah, about uh, is he Mike mad? Hughes. No, <laughs> no, well, Lord. he's no, he's, Look, he's an he's an aging daredevil who I don't know. I, you know, maybe he wants to go out in a blaze of glory. Maybe he does want to do a world record. You know, maybe maybe he wants to to make his his mark on the world. But even I, us I, uh, globe heads would say eighteen hundred feet isn't enough to see. No, no, no. I watched the evolution of that story. I can tell you, I saw it firsthand because I watched the news feeds pretty much constantly. Because he was saying he was going to do this as a test flight, and then he was going to go higher. Well, what? Well, yeah, there were two completely different flights that were going to happen, and. 
this one didn't get confused with the other one. What happened was he, some, some journalist, and I don't know who it was, that I, I wish I knew, I'd die a happy man. The story was just, you know, some daredevil was going to do something. It was getting a little bit of traction. Then, but th the problem was they kept using that same picture with, with the big research flat earth on the side of this thing. And someone just jumped on it and said, you know, rocket man going to prove flat earth, right? Mm -hmm. And apparently that was really, really catchy because everybody ran with it. I mean, every, they didn't even really vary that much from the, uh, from oh, the yeah, they were kind of the same AP story repeated. Yeah. 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 People, they just, I mean, the next thing you know, I'm mean, GQs ran the same story and APs ran the same story in Forbes magazine. I'm going, oh, okay, this is fun. So yeah, we knew, we knew of course, and we, we, we weren't distant. I mean, there's some people that were distancing themselves from it, but of course he wasn't going to run any test. He was just going to jump over a town in a rocket. How crazy is that? Right. And there was nobody living in the town, but there, yeah, we, now we had financed it. Yes. He came to us and, and wanted us to help, you know, finish his rocket thing and say, Hey, we'll put some big stickers on the side. And I was not, uh, I actually would have probably enjoyed being a part of it, but that was a whole different uh, group. It was uh, infinite plane society who now is part of the flat earth network group. And they, they took care of the whole thing. It was supposed to actually happen much earlier. It was supposed to happen during the summer and it didn't. And then after the conference or just before the conference, he announced he was going to do it. And it got here's here's where, again, how things backfire. You know, you never know. It generated so much publicity that there were actually people, you know, people at authority that's like, hey, wait a minute. Where is he launching this from? Hey, Bob, isn't that mm -hmm. your jurisdiction? Right. And it's like, wait, he didn't file. Of course, he didn't file the permits. I mean, he, the thing was made out of scrap parts. Mm -hmm. But we, I yeah, and it was a, like a used Win Winnebago that he converted into the launcher. I mean, this thing is, well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> hopefully, he, hopefully he's using new parachutes. So We just hope he's, he's okay. I hope, yeah, Godspeed, Mad Mike. I hope, I hope it works for him. I really, uh, I mean, on one hand, uh, it's, it's, look, you, you know how it goes. If he, if he makes it, it's great, good publicity. If he doesn't make it, you know, the media will latch onto it even more. And then, then where's the narrative turn? Yeah, Is it like, did Flat Earth turn this man into, you know, it's like. The first Flat Earth casualty. Yeah, yeah that, the, I'm glad you brought up the media. Where, what's their role in this? Do you think that they are just as in the dark as the rest of us? Because they seem very happy to cover the Flat Earth movement. The Flat Earth, you know, I can tell you why. The, the Flat Earth let me use a previous comment, jumping the shark. If civilization has jumped the shark, meaning all media has basically run out of ideas. I mean, how many freaking reality shows can we have about guys with beards that chase sharks and cook on the side? I have no idea, but we, we've, we've fragmented our media to such a degree. There's nothing new under the sun. Flat Earth is one of those few novel things, even though it's not new, technically. It's an old, old concept. But it hasn't gotten been part of the new mainstream media, mm -hmm. which is why you know just about every you guys aren't you guys are actually quite jaded by comparison. Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, no, I mean, I talk to media people. I've done a whole bunch of interviews where flat Earth is so new to them, you know, mm -hmm. as far as the re, you know a potential reality of flat Earth that they're on their heels almost immediately. Mm. I, I remember one radio guy, I, I, he's like grabbing a bottle of scotch out of his drawer. <laughs> like, and uh, other guys are like blazing up. Like, it's like, I don't know what he's saying, man, but I am tripping. Well, we might, well, that's you know, what you get for interviewing with high times. <laughs> tell that was no i did not that's funny though that's <laughs> I'm good you. that's good the uh, but it's uh the media in this case is has i think latched onto it because it's a really unusual partly because it's unusual and partly because it's been trending in certain areas which which they haven't been paying attention to so, so in when that all case, this it might run its course and, and it might lose its I, excitement it's, it's possible. It's but it's 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 hard to say because if media gets in, I mean, I mean, now we are officially mainstream. In fact, the uh, ABC Nightline thing was going to run on the conference tonight, I think, unless the Matt Lauer thing circumvented it. We'll have to see. Mm. Uh, hopefully not. But if it reaches a certain point with media, remember, is right now up until now. I mean, literally up, literally up until this morning, science hasn't put any sort of defense against us. I mean, yeah, if you want to call Neil deGrasse Tyson going on Comedy Central and dropping a mic, I mean, honestly, that was definitely not his A game. So having an astronaut come on a national show like the mm. London thing and saying, you know, just, just I mean, these guys dry as toast, right? You know, say, no, I can I can tell you, you know, the earth is round. He kept using the word round. It was killing me. It's like, dude, no, ball, sphere, globe, dinner plate's round, hubcaps, hubcaps mm -hmm. round. I didn't 
I didn't want to argue with him. He was, at the time, is like, uh, I don't want to have the host kick me off before it's too late. <laughs> so, I, I, well, yeah, and also it was uh, uh, Piers, uh, what's his face? Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan, yeah. Well, I mean, that guy's, that guy's a troublemaker as it stands. So moving I was good. briefly from media to politics, does the president get to know the truth of this? Because what would stop Trump from uh, tweeting it out? Exactly. For me, that's an excellent point. For me, I'll tell you a quick story. I don't think any president has had any power since oh, wow. since Eisenhower. Huh. Eisenhower, I think, was the last president. Remember, he was the guy Eisenhower. that helped. Con- I, ooh, oh, that's good. <laughs> My I'm brain totally, was doing it too. I'm <laughs> stealing that. We're both and punsters. potentially, it's subsidiary rights. But by the way, uh, you said nothing new under the sun. I think you should say nothing new under the. Dome. Dome. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. <laughs> hey, no, sorry, no, we'll you, stop interrupting yeah, you. There's some cla- No, I'm writing this stuff down. Uh, the uh, no Eisenhower, I think, was the the last guy to have any real power. Remember, he was the guy that literally military, military uh, industrial cons- complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Constructed and then told people I as he was waiting. Like, yeah. like, look, I hate to tell you this to you, but I built a really horrible thing. <laughs> that's basically what he was saying. Everybody, every other president after that, and I think Kennedy was more of an example than anything else. Kennedy tried to buck it. Of course, he did. Everybody else played ball, and uh, you don't have to tell Trump. Let me let me tell you a quick Eisenhower story, real quick though. And it may be a myth, but I love the story. Where Eisenhower, remember, he was in office. He wasn't. He was one of the last five star generals, head of NATO forces, that whole thing. And he had gotten word that Area Fifty One, real place, of course, uh, Area Fifty One, the Groom Lake was built without his knowledge. And so he calls him up. You know, he's he's still Eisenhower. Calls him and says, yeah, I'd like to, you know, come out and visit the place. And they say, sorry, you, you don't have clearance. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, because you're a civilian now. You're a president, right? He's going, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call up my buddies down at the First Army, you know, because he has did, all his friends were generals and they all served under him. And, and yeah, he's commander in chief. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's not just commander in chief. He was commander in chief because he was uh, the, the great, you know, this is a guy that was literally over MacArthur and Patton. This is the guy that could actually, you know, yeah. he was amazing. Right. And and he so I'm going to come in here and we'll just roll in and we'll see for ourselves. You're going you're gonna to let that happen or you're just going to let me come over and, and kind of visit the place. And they let him. And, and But the, what my point was, he had to pull strings to do that. No other president since then really has had any power. So, just, sorry, the short answer to your question, oh, my God, if it was me. No, you never tell a guy like Trump. He is. I, I don't even know if there's a better definition of loose cannon politically <laughs> of uh, my fair, life. Fair. We agree yeah, with you on agree. that one. I, I got to sneak in one more uh, like factual question. A okay. Crepuscular rays. Uh, crepuscular rays. Yeah, yeah. That's become kind of a fun one for me. So when I look at many of these photos in actual crepuscular rays in real life or God rays, volumetric lighting, whatever you want to call it, uh, oh. it, it seems like oftentimes they are converging just above the clouds where the, no one thinks the sun is. Otherwise, planes no. would be in danger of running into them. No, no. No, Not no. Yeah, no, no. I'll, I'll agree with you. I don't think they're converging above the clouds. It is an interesting phenomena, though, because it's, it, it is a great visual Oh boy, I don't even know what the term is. You guys might know it better than me. The 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 pictures don't do they they don't help us, but they don't necessarily hurt us either because they're so cool that yeah, it helps us from kind of like a visual example, but the distance is way off. Right. So so it and, can't be. And someone miles away would see a totally different convergence point. It, exactly. I don't I don't know what corpuscular rays really are. It's a fascinating thing. I mean, okay. I suppose I could throw it back into the whole instancing category. So you uh, think it's it's just a, a good way to get people started asking questions, but um, not a proof? Uh, you know, most of us, I don't think I've ever even brought up corpuscular rip for exactly that reason. I, I'm a big believer of not promoting something that I don't, uh, that I'm not 100% buying into myself. Okay. Uh, I try to tell people, like, look, I could sell anything, but I absolutely have to believe in it. Okay. So don't. Don't have me sell vacuum cleaners that are a piece of crap. Uh, right. sort of Let the vacuum so, expert do that. Just yeah, gonna say well. that. Oh, you guys got good stuff. <laughs> We're a comedy show. Seriously. <laughs> as well guys, as uh, truth seekers. You guys seekers. have some great team teamwork stuff there. Good. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to ask you how your life has changed in these last two years. Uh, you gave out your phone number. Right. What does your day look like? I... Never, if you would have told me three years ago that I would be doing this, I would have laughed you out of the room. I would have said, there's no way, no way. Everybody would, of course. 
But in my case, it felt like an amusement park ride just came into my living room, took me, and I went off to the races. In fact, if I live long enough, knock on wood, if I live long enough to write an autobiography, it literally would be called unsolicited because everything that came my way came without me asking. I am literally, I, and I know people say this, but I have in no control of my life at all. I just kind of, I, I just said, I just told the universe or the world, where are you going to take me? Let's, let's let things run with it. And it has been nonstop. Every move, it's just been onward and upward to where, I mean, for example, uh, when I was being interviewed by people, like Coast to Coast called me up, the perfect, perfect example, and the lady was calling me and she was going, okay, uh, give me your pitch. What are you selling? And I go, and this is only three months in, right? And I go, and, uh, I don't know, what are you talking about? She goes, okay, what's your, what's your uh, book called? I go, I don't have a book. <laughs> she goes, what's your, what's your DVD called? I don't have a DVD. She goes, okay, what's your website called? And I go, I have to say this to you. I don't have a website. And she goes, <laughs> why am I talking to you? And I go, I don't know. You called me. And she's going, all right, all right. You got five minutes. What's your pitch? And I, and I gave her the nickel tour of Flat Earth. And that was just one example. I mean, the book people, uh, you know, the, out of London who called me up and said, yeah, we'd like to turn your clues into a book. I go, yeah, whatever. I go, I go, what do you need? And they go, just send us your transcripts and we'll do a little Q&A. I go, okay, fine. Th a couple months later, there, there the book was. The radio show people, I was interviewed on the thing. They said, hey, they literally called me up two seconds after I was done being interviewed because they saw me on Skype. They got the connection from somebody. They said, hey, how would you like to do your own weekly show? Okay, sure. Why not? And things just kept happening to Google. You know, I didn't monetize my channel for the first 15 months. Mm -hmm. And Google writes me and says, hey, maybe you should think about monetizing your channel. Not not like some network, you know, like inner, inner YouTube network. YouTube, you know, themselves wrote me and said, maybe you should monetize your channel. Are you I'll tell that to my buddy who thinks that flat earthers are just out for YouTube click money. No. No, no. Oh my God. That, that's one of the most famous lines we have, which is you, nobody goes into flat earth and make money. <laughs> why, why would you? It's ridiculous. That being said, I'm sorry, you're asking about the day. So YouTube, yeah, I make money off YouTube. Uh, I make money off the book. I make money off the radio show. I mean, not a lot, but enough to, to get by. But in the meantime, we've had producers swimming around since summer of 2015, uh, you know, just looking at trying, because the numbers keep growing. Now they're growing to a level to where there's people putting crap together. I mean, there's a documentary team that just finished up. Uh, there's multiple documentary teams that are just finishing up. There's reality television shows that have been pitched and died, but they're still being pitched. Uh, you know how that the, goes? Oh, yeah. There you go. I mean, it's it's an interesting it's an interesting animal. But I again, I am just humbled to be a part of it. I never I thought honestly that Eric Dubay and Matt Boylan would have taken the reins. Even that was an interesting story. Matt Boylan, you probably heard about that guy, right? I've heard the, the name. The Okay, Matt Boyne. He was like one of the one of the early flat Earth guys. I mean, real dynamic guy, painter slash actor slash prima donna out of Montreal, Canada. Who everybody, literally the first six people that called me for interviews were actually just calling me to get Matt's phone number. Talk about <laughs> your, your esteem killer. It's like, yeah, you're that flat earth guy. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Did you know how to get a hold of Matt Boylan? It's like, oh, fine. And I would, I was one of the few guys that actually did. So I'd call up Matt and I say, and he's this, 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 uh, this artist that, uh, you know, was too, too cool for school. And he's like, no, man, I'm, not. you know, the, it's like, no, I'm not doing interviews. <laughs> he's like, come on. I go, what do you want me to tell him? It's like, I'm not passing notes through class. What do you want me to do? Hey, I don't care. So what do you think happened? You know, I go back to him. And I go, no, Matt doesn't want to talk. He goes, well, it's, do you want to talk about Flat Earth? Yes, I do. And after the, the first half dozen, then the rest started falling in line. So I honestly thought it was going to be different people that were going to be taking the reins on this. And now I, it's kind of like, all right, I've done enough stuff to where uh, people just apparently I can I can give an interview without sounding completely nuts. <laughs> Definitely. And, uh, well, and that's why people people apparently respond to that. People are really scared of conspiracy guys. You know, they expect them to be you know wearing all black and and. You know, watching nothing but Batman movies. Sure, you know, the you old... run into the nutty ones sometimes. Well, yeah, and apparently I come up. In fact, the, the one of the documentary guys he told me he said he goes, I got to be honest with you. He goes, the thing that really surprised me the most was how normal you seem to be. <laughs> I guess that's flattering. I guess so. Flattering. Ah, uh, <laughs> flattering you guys are... will get you nowhere. Oh, no, seriously. Wait, where are you guys based out of? <laughs> Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. Oh my God. All right, all right. Now this makes sense. I'm about to say, you guys are way too sharp for outside of LA. 
<laughs> no, there's no way you could be doing this just yeah, off the cuff. It's pun You're... country over here. Uh, that's uh, awesome. So yeah. before 2015, what were you doing? Again, my initial career, I started out playing video games for a living. Literally, uh, okay. I won a, a computer game tournament back in the, the mid 90s and was hired by a publisher out of Boulder, Colorado. So, and there weren't a lot of game publishers in Boulder, that was for sure. And went out there. And when that company eventually folded, I ended up teaching proprietary software for the better part of 20 years. Okay. That was what I did. And then I, you know, was kind of doing the, the flatter thing. There was a couple startup companies I was messing with because Boulder was great for startup companies. And so I had some downtime and I was going down some of these rabbit holes. And li literally in the summer of 2014 was when I ran into Flat Earth, just as kind of a lark, just as kind of a, all right, I've seen all the other conspiracies, what's left? Uh, and, you know, I was Flat Earth. I literally didn't want didn't want to click on it. I mean, I like look at it. I was going, I'm not clicking on that piece of crap. There's no way. And then I come back a week later. It's like, oh, it's still there. Mm -hmm. Fine. I'll click on it. And then I got sucked into it. And nine months later, the clues were born. So. Okay. Well, uh, tell our listeners again where to find you. The easiest way is just to Google or YouTube Flat Earth Clues. That is the easiest way. You don't have to worry about my name. Eventually, you'll get to my name. My name is just Mark Sargent. That's the name of my channel. From there, you'll find the book and the audio thing. Uh, I have a show on, stray on True Frequency Radio, and I make a whole bunch of videos, and you might see me out there sometime. If, you, if you're into Flat Earth at all, you'll, you'll run you're into me. You're hard to miss, yeah. I'm hard to miss, but I, I've got to put a warning. Look out to anyone, and you guys have covered this before a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. yes. I, yeah, I mean, look, if this is the first time anyone's listening to your guys' show, has listened to this. If you like your life the way it is, you think you got a good bead on things, movie reference, then don't look into it. Don't don't look into Flat Earth because once you do, look, you'll you'll black out, wake up two weeks later and, and think you went on vacation in Tijuana. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, you know, Ross and I have been working on this for a little bit and looked into it a lot and our lives are pretty similar. But we've been yeah. having before. fun. Yeah, but we've been having a lot of fun. Oh, that's good. That's good. I, there's a lot of people that, that yeah, they go down it and it, and it hits them pretty hard. Uh, sure. It, it, yeah, but, it seems but, like the world could look really scary if you start to envision you, sort of all these uh, bad actors all around you. Well, I mean, uh, some people say, you know, it makes the world, you're turning the world from a, a giant, a giant universe into a one room apartment. And I say, well, yeah, kind of, but isn't it more intimate? It, but it's a very well-furnished, nice, very well-protected one-room apartment. Sure, with and, a lot of liars in it. Well, a few liars, <laughs> sure. Sure, your bio but dome. I mean, come on. I mean, people people lie about all sorts of stuff. Look, this world is based off of deception, not 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 just the flat Earth, globe Earth part. I mean, you know, everything we do, you know, there's we we have people that lie for a living. You know, lawyers, uh, used car salesmen, politician. You know, put an anchor around them, throw them in the ocean. Be a better place. That's just your start. <laughs> so. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Mark. This has been really illuminating, and you've been so generous with your time. Thank oh, you. no, no, no. Happy, happy to do it. Pleasure, and you guys have a good night. All right, All right. you too. You too, Mark. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, that's it for our show. Our thanks to Mark Sargent. Wonderful yeah. interviewee. Absolutely. Our theme music is by Brian Keith Dalton. Our show is produced and co-edited by Ian Kramer. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash onrack, O-N-R-A-C. Find pictures, find articles, talk to us. Find some links of the stuff that Mark talked about today. And you can also support this and all our investigations by going to maximumfund.org forward slash donate. You can help us out by leaving us positive reviews wherever you leave reviews. And find us on Twitter, too. Yeah. Carrie Persons, our Twitter. That's oh No true. Podcast. Yep. And let's give Mark Sargent the last word. Don't take my word for it. Don't believe a word I say. I, you know, I'm just a guy on the radio or a podcast or whatever this is. Do your own research. That's what I put it literally at the end of every video I made uh, for a while anyway. Do, you know, look into this yourself. Try to prove it yourself and don't just watch YouTube videos. Go out there and, and browse around. See what you can find out. Whatever resonates with you because it's, it's an interesting world out there and uh, you, should, you should prove it for yourself. Well, Carrie, that was a great interview. Oh my gosh. I I don't know what I expected, but it still surpassed my expectations. Uh, we didn't convince him of the, the spherical earth. Yeah, that's true. But, but that wasn't our aim, so no, that's okay. Not at all. No. Just to understand. Good conversation.